All right. Good morning, Zach. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It's almost Christmas. I got my voice back, ready to go. Yeah, man. It, it is Christmas. Is one of those. It's one of those. It's just coming. It's just. It feels like it was so far away, and now suddenly it's just here. Like the next Ravens game being on Christmas doesn't sit right with me. So there's so many advantages of us being eleven and three. The number one thing is, and it's hard to put yourself in this position as a Ravens fan because we've only had a couple of years like this where yeah. like, it's just you hate football. You start making excuses because your team's five and nine. And it's like, I don't even know why I like football. I'm ready for bad. You know, all those. Things. Yeah. A lot when, of them- when's March Madness start? Right. When can I make my bracket? When's Orioles spring training? All those questions. So I wanted so I wanted this pie. I didn't even tell you what we we're going to talk about because I wanted this to be a combination of a celebration that we're 11 and three because sometimes we need to take a step back and it's like fun that we're able to even just talk Ravens. So there's nothing but positives, but I also don't like harping on positives just for the sake of harping on positives Mm because there's a lot of holes in this team. There's a lot of things that I want your opinion on. And in order for us to win two out of these three next games and then win, you know, three or four games to win the Super Bowl. There's a couple things that we have to address. Um, yeah. So let's get right into it. And I'm going to start with the offensive line because the whole Ravens offense works as long as Lamar is comfortable, as long as we're mm-hmm. chilling. So I'm going to throw a couple things at you and then I'm going to let you go. So uh, let's see. Simpson, Zeitler, and um, of course, Linderbaum, 100% of the snaps. Those three guys. Um, I'll get your take on Simpson after I finish, but – Zeitler and, and Linderbaum have been fantastic. Yeah. Um, solid. Great. So yeah. here's here's our issue. Those, it, it's the it, the conversation starts with the right. next guys. So last mm-hmm. week, just to go over the snap count, keep everybody deal with facts, and then we'll go with your opinion. So Stanley yeah. played. Let me make sure I get it. So Stanley, 69% of the snaps. Moses, 51%. And then Phileo. Is that how you pronounce it? Falele, Falele, yeah, Falele, yeah. He got 49%. So yeah. Stanley, it's not a secret. If you're following the Ravens, you're in the weeds. Stanley is, hasn't played like himself. No. What is your overall – I'll set up this <clears> one. <throat> what is the overall take on the offensive line? Is And I'm sorry, and Makari got 31% of the snaps. Yeah. But is this sustainable? Do they need to pick a five? Give me – let's start there. This – the Baltimore Ravens go <clears throat> as far as their tackles go. And I I don't know if it's sustainable right now with how Ronnie Stanley is playing. And I think the team is going to have to, and I think they've already started taking a hard look at can we have him out there for 100% of the snap. They're trying to keep him healthy because you can just – see his knee is not healthy he can't anchor on it if you're bull rushing ronnie stanley right now you're gonna get to lamar jackson and that is a massive issue so the first question is moses does he go to left so this is my conundrum as a coach yeah i want moses at the left tackle spot but if i do that i'm done with stanley because i can't ask him to play right tackle he's never played right tackle so halfway, yeah. you know, with three games left and then the playoffs. So what they seem to be doing is trying to get the most out of – they're asking Moses to play both sides. And then they're mm. asking Stanley to get the most out of – and I don't know. Like, do you just bench them? Because I feel like switching it out is not the right move. I, I understand yeah. doing it in the regular mm. season. We're trying to figure it out. Stanley gets hurt sometimes. Whatever they're yeah. – but – I don't know what, like, do you just move yeah. do you cut the losses with Stanley move Moses to the left and then just yeah. let um, Phileo and Macari figure it out at right. Hey, part of me. And I've talked to a few people that, about this. Part of me is like, why, like you said, are we not just moving Moses to left Macari to right. And then it's let Stanley sit for three, the rest of the regular season. If it's truly his knee, that is the issue with all of this where, he can't put pressure on it. He can't anchor in it. And that is affecting him and it's just health. Then give him those three weeks to try to get back to himself. Because him playing, like you said, it's not sustainable if it's, oh, we're taking him out for, you know, 
40% of the plays because playing 60% of the plays in an NFL game is going to still put a toll on your body. He's not going to be recovering during those times. So if they want, if it's truly health, I think what do they have to really gain by playing him the next three games? I agree with that. And Lamar has been so, you know, it was a little bit of a mixed bag last week. Um, as far yeah. as when he got out of the pocket, he mm-hmm. that safety made a great play. Collinsworth did a good yeah. job on the replay. That was a great play. But yeah. Um, Fantastic one. In the moment, I was not happy with Lamar. But after watching a few times, I was like, okay, great play. He had likely for the easy first down, but we won. That's what, and the reason he's in a, you know, he's running around a lot. He's moving, like, it all starts, like we said, with the offensive line. So that goes Mm -hmm. into, uh, I'm glad it's Friday because I didn't know if I should message. I didn't message you because the Skeet Mitchell thing. So the thing about Zach, if, people don't know that I'll just say this for you is Zach is the biggest fan of everybody. Like until you do something wrong, like permanent, like yeah. I, you'll be the first person. I hate saying this, but if the Orioles or Ravens, something bad happens, you're the first person that I would want to see because it's like, Oh, you finally have to be upset because you're like yeah. this eternal optimist until like the very last second. So you're already yeah. with the funk kid from Maryland. You already probably have his jersey. So I know this yeah. thing is driving you nuts. It's the worst. Physically thing. ill. Phys- I know. Physically ill. And, but here's the narrative that I heard people say that I just frankly disagree with. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, I feel bad for Keaton Mitchell. I feel bad. The Ravens, oh, they're fine. They were this before Keaton Mitchell. They'll be this mm-hmm. after. And I was like, I feel bad for him, but – um yeah are you watching what's happening like he is so explosive Mm -hmm. i is it replaceable let's have that three minute melvin gordon justice hill jake funk conversation it will it's replaceable but not at the same level i mean like we said he started to take over roles as the running back one he was getting the majority of snap counts He was getting the majority of touches and he really felt like he was evolving into that every down back. And now we're back to square one. We're back to week nine. We're back with justice Hill and Gus Edwards. And that those are the two. I mean, yeah, Melvin Gordon, I think is going to maybe get some touches here and there, but I don't see him being a massive part like Keaton Mitchell was, I think it's going to be Gus Edwards and Justice Hill for the long haul, which I think at the end of the day, the reason that the Ravens are, have the best rushing attack is because of Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. And as long as he's the quarterback, I think they have that advantage and they will be a top rushing team. But yeah, losing Mitchell sucks. I mean, that if you watch the past four games, He's been the most explosive player on offense. So with that being said, they're playing the 49ers. So this week, a lot of the weeks during the season, you're like, just win the game. And having an identity, if you will, doesn't really matter. I think the Chiefs are in that right now. Um, It's Mm -hmm. like, what is their identity? They're like, I don't know. We, we're fine. We're mm-hmm. Bills running the ball a little bit more, starting to figure out. I think the only team that jumps out at me as having an identity on offense, like I know exactly mm-hmm. what they're trying to accomplish on the AFC side, is Miami. I don't know if yeah. they're good enough to execute it, but I know mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. We know they're going to do those yeah. wide runs. Um, they're going to do a lot of misdirection. They want to win on whatever. Let's not talk about the Dolphins right Yeah, there's so, but but I say that to say, what is the Ravens' identity? Because a lot of times when you're watching, the cool thing about the Ravens this year is that they can win in a variety of ways. Yeah. It's almost like we haven't necessarily needed an identity. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, without Keaton Mitchell, it does beg the question of, do they want the identity to be spreading them out? Like, do we want to pound like the offense? I don't really know. I feel like we're really talented, but I don't quite know what the identity is. I ask you, what do you think the game plan is against San Francisco? In an ideal world, what kind of game do the Ravens want to play? Um, Go for it. I think it's still going to be run the ball. I think John Harbaugh is, when it's all said and done, he wants to establish the run and play good defense. And even though Keaton Mitchell's down, I don't think it's going to change 
how they want to set up the offense. You know, like we always talk about, they're going to want to get in these third and favorables because, yeah, you don't, you don't have Keaton Mitchell, but you also don't have, you know, Mark Andrews, who's, you know, has been such Lamar's safety blanket. So, you know, they were going, they're going to have to continue to rely on being the top run team in the league, I think, because even though you have guys like Odell and Zay really coming on and doing well, Isaiah likely is really stepping up. I think they are most dangerous when they are using the run game to keep other teams off the field and keep their, the Ravens defense fresh because when that unit's healthy and going full speed and rested, they can get three and outs anytime they want. So that's really the biggest advantage, I think. Doesn't Shanahan um, watch the Rams Mm -hmm. offense on that first drive and say, hey, wait a second, they went to Baltimore, ran eight, nine times up the middle. Mm -hmm. Then as the game went on, Stafford was able to make plays. He had way better players. That's why Mm -hmm. the line's five and a half. Like, so everybody understands the disrespect. I'm glad Mm -hmm. Ravens what Ravens yeah. can feel ever they want, but from a gambling standpoint, yeah. from just watching football, the reason why they're not big favorites is because the Rams destroyed, like the Rams just went right down the field. So the logic is San Francisco is going to be able to do that. They have better players mm-hmm. at almost every position yeah. than the Rams, except the quarterback mm-hmm. position, which yeah. I don't want to have a Brock Purdy conversation, but what's the 49ers um, identity? <laughs> What's their game plan against the Ravens? Because to me, it feels like they're going to just run the ball up the middle yeah. and see if we can stop it, right? Yeah, I mean, then we also you brought up the Rams to start the Jaguars game, their first drive. They just ran the ball up the middle against right. us. And I think the, the 49ers are going to come out and they're going to hand the ball to Christian McCaffrey up the middle and do it until we can stop it. And unfortunately – Christian McCaffrey is very, very good at the game of football. And Why aren't we stopping up? So, so what's the deal? Because once we get the lead and the mm-hmm. teams are in, that's why we have all the sacks. That's why our, our safety is have all the like, like I said, I didn't want to go over all the positives today yeah. because there's so many of them. I want to focus on what the hell is wrong. Why? And how do we fix it? And so the yeah. offensive line and now the defensive line, like that's, so talk to me, is it an individual player? Is it the offensive lines that we played recently? It's really interesting because like you kind of alluded to, it starts out horribly. The opposing team seems to come out and immediately be able to run the ball down the Ravens throats. Then it, seems suddenly like it just stops abruptly and the Ravens put it together. So, you know, each week I'm, I just get confused because it's like, there's two different Ravens run defenses that show up to the game. So is it yeah. so based on what you just said, we all know, I shouldn't say we all know. Um, it's most teams, especially yeah. elite teams like the Rams mm-hmm. and uh, the Jaguars and the 49ers with elite offensive coaches, they script the first 15, 20 plays, right? Yeah. So is it a, is it something where McDonald's just a better coach? So after the first 15, once it becomes a coach, yeah. that's not really a coaching match. The first 15 plays, you can kind of get away with it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. it, so a lot of times when I look at it, I'm like, is it because McDonald just figures it out is there something that um, – is there something else? Is it that we're getting the lead and then their teams are becoming a little bit more predictable? Is it just, frankly, it's happened the past couple of weeks, but it hasn't necessarily been the case the whole season? Am mm-hmm. I Because right? we're about to face the two best running teams, and then we know the Steelers, if that game counts, they're just going to run it 85 times. Up the- <laughs> I can't wait for that. Exactly. But, that, the, yeah. the, but what are yeah, we – Yeah, the Raven- Ravens are going to have to stop the run. I mean, plain and simple. And, you know, when you watch, you know, go back and watch when the teams have been running the ball against us. And I think what's most frustrating from a stand fan point is they get penetration and it's like they have guys there Mm -hmm. to make these stops, but they just get beat there, you know, one gap over. And it's just like they're just one off the whole first drive. And then they just fix it. So I'm not sure, like you said, I don't know. Is it a coaching thing where McDonald, after the first drive, he goes back and he's just great at adjustments? You know, his plan is 
we see what they throw at us the first drive, and then we adjust from there. I'm not sure, but it is weird because, like we said, teams get here, run the ball up the middle. It feels like at will their first drive, and then it's like we can't do anything. And it's like, what you guys just did that super easily. Why aren't you doing that again? So set you up for the last. I want to frame the last. No, excuse me. If I want to frame the last three weeks this way. Do the Ravens feel in your mind getting to the locker room on the trip? I guess they're flying out today, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it's a holiday weekend. I feel like we have the advantage because we have nothing to lose because we mm-hmm. play Miami at home next week. Do you yeah. think that, right, as long as we win two out of three, we don't have to win this game. Do you think that helps in this situation? Um, and then what, what do you expect? Like, I guess what I want to know is, is there anything that would make you nervous? Like if we lost, cause to me, if we lost 31, yeah. 14, 38 to 10, I'm going to look at it and be like, all right, we need to get our ass kicked before we win the Super Bowl. We're done with the NFC. Let's go beat the Dolphins. Mm. We'll get the one seed. Yeah. Um, is there anything though that would make you nervous? I don't want to see them run up the middle. I'll be honest, but I kind of yeah. feel like, I don't know if the game gets out of hand and Lamar makes a couple bad plays, I'm not going to freak out. Do you have that same feeling or? How, or- yeah, I think I'm kind of, this game feels like house money. It really does. It, you know, the whole underdog aspect, the fact that it really is an insane test this late into the year. I think it, yeah, even if we get our butts handed to us, it's one of those things where I think I would view it as, Hey, you know, Better now than in the Super Bowl. So I'm not too worried about this game. I think it really – I don't ever want to say you can lose a game because, you know, you play to win. You want to win. But if they lose this game, it doesn't impact the season that much, like you said, as long as you you just have to go take care of business against Miami. Which is back to the whole Ronnie Stanley thing. The biggest question, so the defensive mm-hmm. line, we're not going to change anything, meaning the personnel is not going to change. Mm-hmm. You might see certain players play a little bit more in the playoffs because right now they balance it out. Yeah. Um, but our best players on defense are the, the linebackers and Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not going to change. So if we yeah. get beat running up the middle, you know, then I guess we just weren't good enough. But on the offensive side, it feels like there's a coaching – aspect to it meaning the defense if it holds up then great if it doesn't then like it kind of is what it is with the defense um the Mm -hmm. offense is like man what should we do well like how do we approach these next three weeks um starting with the offensive line so it'll be fascinating frankly to see how they play this game what it looks like it does feel like house money so i wanted to bring that back um to like the first point but like Mm. it's so great to just be a fan of a team that not only is in the playoffs, but that's 11 and three. And I wanted to ask you this way. It seems like, so we'll, we'll obviously dive into the playoffs when Mm. we get there, but I wanted to know if there was one team that's not being included in what I'll call the top six, because you can't find anybody that would say that that anybody outside of these six teams won the Super Bowl, right? It's either the Ravens, Mm. the chiefs, the dolphins, the Eagles, the 49ers, or the Cowboys? Is the Bills, is it the Rams, is it the Lions? <laughs> if I made you bet on one team that gets hot here on the next few weeks and is not part of those top six that makes it to the Super Bowl, who would you take? Uh, I got to go with the Rams. I think they are they are getting hot at the right time. Matt Stafford is throwing the ball some of the – Throwing some of the best passes of his career. Cooper Cup, Puka Nakua. Demarcus Robinson, it's out of nowhere becoming a top weapon for them. Kyron Williams establishing the run there. That's a team that you don't want to run into. I don't completely buy into the Bills yet. I think they are a talented team who are finally putting it together. But if I have to pick from those guys, as weird as it is to say, Stafford's been there, done that. So. Yeah. You know, that team has gone and won a ring, and I think they have the talent on that offense to do it. And then in the AFC, let you go on this. I I wanted to focus on the Bengals-Steelers for a minute. 
because yeah. I wanted to I wanted to be really just happy that both of those teams are so stressed out for different reasons. Like the yeah. Bengals are trying to get to the playoffs, and you just know that nobody's going to bet. So the way the gambling world works is once you know that nobody wants to bet on a team, it's like it doesn't matter like what the statistics are. It's like your gut feeling. If you talk to your friends that know football, nobody wants to bet on the Steelers. Yeah. Because you either bet on them last week thinking, Oh, this is a good spot for them. And they get burned. And then it's like, wait, Mason Rudolph. So with that being said, the Bengals are going to lose to the Steelers because that's just how the world works. And the Steelers have one final chance to make the playoffs and then we'll stop them. And then both of those won't happen. They both won't make the playoffs. And then the Texans will beat the Browns this week. So then the Browns will have to stress out. So I just think people should watch. It's not like me preaching, but me also like telling myself, maybe I'm telling you, like watch the Ravens 49ers game and know that like house money like the Eagles don't have house money, the Chiefs, even the 49ers don't have house money. They have to get the one yeah. right? Like we yeah. can lose a game in December and then win two home games to get the one seed. Like that's pretty yeah. um that's a pretty cool position to be in. Yeah, if you would have told us at the beginning of the year that this is the position we'd be in, I would take this in a heartbeat. Right. Because the Dolphins are gonna they got such a tough game against the Cowboys. I look forward to breaking that down with you because yeah. every time the Dolphins come to Baltimore, they win for something. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, and but, I'm sure we'll be up by like two scores at some point as well and all that. But, yeah, no, big Cowboy fan this week because that would really, uh, really set things straight. That would make things a lot more enjoyable. Is there anything else? Um, I wanted to maybe just get two minutes of your thoughts on the Orioles yeah. before we – because I guess I'll see you next Friday, but mm-hmm. so the the popular so this is what I meant to say when I was doing the the what's it Jake Funk right is that his name yeah Jake so, Funk so only the Orioles could get a pitcher from the Royals with like an eight something ERA and you're like showing statistics oh he's got potential he's got this going yeah. so what's his name again uh Heasley he's Jonathan like, Heasley so we've added him. Who may or may not even make the forty man roster, yeah. twenty five yeah. roster, but you're excited. That's fine. Um, yeah. Kim as Rule. long as we we've seen Mike Elias steal Kansas City Royals players before and turn them into stars, so just another dart to throw. So I need two things from you. One, I need you to continue to use whatever influence you have to make sure we don't get the Herman guy because I don't understand. Yeah. Like that can't happen. Don't I that, actually yeah. saw him pitch? Went to the Orioles game over the summer and he was pitching. And yeah. I was trying to start a fight. I was with my brother. Yeah. I was trying to start a fight by talking about him. Like, in the, <laughs> but instead, like everybody around me just agreed with me. We're like, yeah, we don't like him either. Like, I don't know why. Yeah. It's team. so funny. I have a friend who's a diehard Yankees fan. And when Herman threw the uh, perfect game, that doesn't count he, yeah, against the A's. Right. Yeah. Nobody was, was there. He was seeing me during it. And he was actively like, do not throw this perfect game. He's like, get a hit. Get a hit. He's like, I can't have this be the guy on my franchise to do this. So, yes, use your influence to make sure we don't get him. And then yeah. give me a prediction. Because last time we talked about it, I, I've predicted not necessarily um, jumping up and down about it, but I think he, yeah. Santander, or Mullins will get traded mm-hmm. for a top-line yeah. pitcher. Um, I don't necessarily know if I'm even rooting for that. That's just my prediction. Yeah. Give me something uh, that happens – that maybe people aren't thinking about that's what are your yeah, thoughts? I I think the O's there's gonna be a splash, I think, in the next two weeks because Yamamoto and Shohei are finally, even though it's both to the Dodgers, both have finally signed and now we are going to see the floodgates open. Jo- the Jordan Montgomery's, Blake Snell's, the free agents are gonna fly off. The trade market's gonna heat up because now all the teams trading starters are going to go to the teams that missed out on Yamamoto and try to drive the price up. So, so give me I think somebody. The floodgate, give me. I still give think it, uh, Dylan Cease. I still I'm going to say Dylan Cease is an Oriole. I and he I gets here through. Him. He gets here through yeah, trade, right? Through trade. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's coming over from the White Sox. And your gut says that's more prospects instead of a ready-made outfit. Uh, think? I think it's going to be one bigger prospect and then I could see it including an outfielder I think it's going to be a guy like sadly like Santander or Hayes gets thrown in there because the White Sox do have a nice 
young. But that won't be the though. best player. Like they'll say yeah. that's the second best player, and then they'll take like a Mayo from us, maybe somebody like that. Yeah, yeah, someone, no one from our top like two, but they'll they'll try to grab someone in like our top and like four or five guy. So ultimately, if we replace one of the outfielders with one of our prospects, mm-hmm. Colin Kerstead. Um, yeah. Is O'Hearn coming back? Uh, he has a – Yeah. Yeah, O'Hearn is – so far he's got a spot. I would not be surprised if we – as much as I hate it, I could see them trading him just because his value is at an all-time high. They have so many tough decisions to make. They yeah. Really- like, it's a good problem to have, but it is weird as an Oriole fan to be like, we have too much talent. Like, we don't have enough spots. Just play so double headers. Like, like every, yeah. double headers. Um, yeah. You expand the roster by 10 guys and we'll win like 115 games. Exactly. We just have to compete with, we have a 40 man roster. The 40 man roster shows up every day and you split it up and they play two games. That should be how it works. All right. Well, Zach, I appreciate it. This was cool. Um, have a, a Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too. A happy new Well, no, I'll see you next Friday. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, yeah. I always forget how. It's weird. It's the 25th to New Year's, and for some reason, I feel like it's the next day. They have done a great – like, I'm not in favor of all the football, Thursday night football, but at the end of the year, the way they've spaced it out, like, I feel like there's a between the bowl games and, you know, everything. Yeah, it's a lot of fun football right now. All right, dude. Well, enjoy the game. Enjoy Christmas, and uh, I'll see everybody next week. See you next week. See you, bud.